Hi, it's October 9th, 2011. Steve Jobs has passed away. And that's really the news all around the technology sector. But I'm bringing your news from my back garden, Irish Sunday Times. Actually, people pointed out before that's actually the London Sunday Times, but it's published in Ireland. You're watching this if you are seeing the video on youtube.com stroke top cold, or you read about it, www.insideview.ie. I've got a blog. Fair play to Steve. Worthwhile buying that edition of The Economist or reading it on your iPad for the Business Week edition this week. No no ads. All Steve. All Steve. Inside some time, some stuff related to Ireland here. This is important to know that according to the polls, people, a clear majority of them, want the finance minister to cut things. Not raise taxes. It's a poll done by Behavior and Attitudes for the Sunday Times and the BNA poll shows some interesting things to how some of the contestants, candidates for the Irish presence here, making their message known. Bill Clinton was here in town talking unscripted about the perception of Ireland globally. He's ready to help, Clinton says. Lots of stuff out there, trillions of uninvested uh, American profits. Things could go into those who think they're Irish or something to help Ireland. Like maybe hampers. Tom Lyons got a story of, a, of the case of Irish Nationwide. Before that, before that bank went under, Michael Fingleton's Irish Nationwide acted like Santa Claus. 8,500 euro and 10 hampers packed full of drinks and treats. Hampers are a bad thing now for money and business around Ireland, but I like campers and I wish wish they weren't so negative. The WorldIrish.com forum, launched during the Global Irish Economic Forum, needs 10 million in fresh funding, writes Mark Paul. I enrolled in that thing. They got an API they're trying to deliver, develop. 10 million euro, I wonder where it's going to go. What makes anything better than Facebook or LinkedIn? But hey, I like what I see initially. This is unfortunate. Poor Dublin Protection, the, the, the Dublin Society of Protection of Cruelty to Animals, DSPCA, running out of money basically, shutting down stuff. 350 euro for every rehomed dog. That's a real shame. Animals will be put down now because uh, budget constraints. People won't be put down though. Richard Oakley has uh, a real interesting story about the number of drivers who are caught speeding having their cases struck out in court because you show up to contest your speeding violation and you claim you never got the traffic offense posted to you. There's no way to trace that you're lying. So, um, you know, 80% of people pay their fines, but the ones who contest in court often can get out by that wiggle room. This is why that, that, that poll might be important. Austerity. Sean Gallagher is running for the Irish presidency and two things running behind the scenes. One is people do do like the way that he pronounces the word austerity and the strategies he has for it. The other thing is that 13 percent of Fianna Fáil voters are backing McGuinness, but the pollsters think about more than 30 percent of Fianna Fáil voters are backing Sean Gallagher. That's an, that's a, an interesting way that Fianna Fáil can affect the presidency in Ireland. More about what's beyond Steve Jobs. An interesting thing here from Maeve Conrick, Irish languages, that is to say, languages being studied by students in Irish universities. She claims that the lack of coherent language policies means Irish citizens are denied high quality language learning experiences and opportunities. I mean, you're not going to go up to China to do your uh, internship there if you can't speak the language. Sunday Business Post, a few things here inside the post.ie. Here we go. More about third level and, well, the language of doing business. Terry Scott's the president of IT Sligo. She thinks there's got to be better ways for ITs to cooperate with each other. And she says, look, a lot of money's being put into third level. Well, so where to, where to coordinate, where to collaborate? A, e-learning. She points that herself, so does the Hunt Report. I really think there's a, there needs to be a pan-Irish initiative where the best modules are brought into flexible e-learning and just do it together, a bunch of ITs. Ireland could double its job score in the gaming sector, Martha Kearns thinks. Well, it's not her opinion. 
more than double its employment to up to 4,500 people, according to a report carried out by Forfuss. We train people to be gamers. Well, to be games developers. WWVLHE.ie is where you need to go about that. And if you watch and listen to comment and analysis from Sunday Business Post, you'll know it's about time, in which there should be no debate, that if universities want more money, they got to do better, serve students better, and maybe it means doing stuff for the entire year, not having that summertime off to go cropping. Let's harness the power of the online Irish network. Start with education. I mean, David McWilliams has this whole gig explaining to the people in the Global Irish Forum what to do. And he does something, or he says something that I circled big time. The more startups, not the greatest number of startup successes, the more startups, whether they're a success or not, it's a great indication of whether it's the best indicator. So let's go down the road with me. Along the N24 and Claude Mill. If you're in Thailand or Cambodia or overseas somewhere where it's romantic and lovely like Hawaii, know that the leaves are falling and the season's changing. See all the rest of the images on Flickr.com, stroke photo, stroke Irish eyes. Check out my blog, www.insideview.ie. Bernie Goldbach in the back garden saying bye for now.